Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I consider this matchup Ishmael Shalak against Sergei Kovalev to be a very bad matchup for Ishmael Shalak, simply based on styles. Consider boxing to be rock, paper, scissors. Certain styles beat other styles. I think what Shalak's going to find out is that he's not prepared for Sergei Kovalev's full game. Let's talk about why. Let's talk about the styles. Shalak's a counterpuncher. What that means is he's standing there hoping the other guy does something so that he can counter it. Right? If the other guy is busy throwing a punch and has his hand extended, then that guy is defenseless for a punch on the same side. That guy might even be defenseless for a punch on this side, depending on his balance and reflexes. Right? If I throw a punch, and let's say like Manny Pacquiao against Juan Manuel Marquez, I'm rushing in and my momentum is coming forward. A counterpuncher is going to know that I can't dodge the punch by leaning backwards. So counterpunchers are reading the flow of a fight. They're reacting <clears throat> to what their opponent does. Sometimes a counterpuncher is even the guy leading the action in a way. Because a counterpuncher will faint a punch. His opponent will then do something that the counterpuncher will then counter. Right? So counterpunchers are trying to get you to do things. Now think about this. To be able to counter you, a counterpuncher has to have his hands in position. Right? This is the secret, in my opinion, to Ishmael Shalak. This is why he's so successful. He has his hands up. His opponent does something. Shalak is the kind of guy who's able to keep his hands exactly where they are. Right? So, the opponent's throwing a punch. Shalak has pretty good legs. Shalak will simply move back a little bit. But his hands are still here. Right? So his hands are always in a position to then throw his counter. Right? So what he's doing is he's moving around the ring. His legs and upper body are his defense. Right? So, the guy throws a punch. Shalak might lean a little bit, have the punch deflect off his shoulder. Then, of course, he has his hands right here, ready to counter. So the guy throws it. Shalak rolls. It hits his shoulder. Shalak can then come back with a left hand that is always available to him. Right? I think that's going to lead to problems. Now, I've listened to many who know the sport of boxing much better than I do. Emmanuel Stewart, for example. And Stewart would sometimes talk about the importance of keeping your hands ready to counter. Right? In other words, if you could take a step back, but still have your hands ready to counter, for many in the sport... That's a good thing, right? Let me make the other case. It's a bad thing here. What I would prefer, quite frankly, the fighters I think are elite fighters. You know, one floor up are the guys who can actually 
block your shot with a forearm, right? The guys who actually don't rely on their legs for defense all the time. Don't rely on just upper body movement. But they can actually block your shot and come back with a counter. Right? If you see a guy who's a counter puncher and he's actually able to cover up, play defense, block shots, and then counter, you're looking at an elite fighter. Right here. I believe what's going to happen is Sergei Kovalev is going to figure out, in fact, probably has already figured out because he has a great team. John David Jackson and those guys have studied the sport. They know that the downside to keeping your hands in place and just dodging punches by leans and feet is that you're defensively exposed, right? In other words, if a guy comes in and he's able to throw power punches in volume, right? If you aren't accustomed to raising a hand to block shots, if you're not this guy, rather, if you're this guy, right? you're going to get hit with some of the power shots. If you look at the Dennis Groshev fight, you're going to see that even as Groshev is throwing big-time hooks, Ishmael Shalak keeps his hands like this. Right? Shalak's not blocking the punch. Rather, what he's doing is he's moving his feet. He's stepping out of harm's way and stuff like that. Now that works when you have faster foot speed than your opponent. I don't think he does here. That works when the fight's a shorter fight and you have energy and you're able to kind of like move around the ring for 10 rounds. We're now in championship territory. Kovalev is the champion. This fight is a 12 round fight, right? Also understand Kovalev in spacing. First, let me say this. Kovalev's balance is among the very best in boxing. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone with better balance than Kovalev. What that means is when you're watching the Nathan Cleverly fight, the first round, Cleverly comes out with a jab, <clears throat> right? Now, I have problems with Cleverly, right? His feet are too wide apart. He doesn't move a lot. He gives away his height. You'll see him bending over even while he's throwing the jab against Kovalev. You know, I prefer guys who leverage height up on your toes, flicking a jab with a lean back so the other guy can't find your head. That's not Cleverly. The point, though, is... As Cleverly comes, comes in and is flicking a jab, Kovalev actually moves away from the jab. Then you're going to see Kovalev come forward in that fight, in that very first round. You don't have to watch longer than three minutes. You're going to see him come forward, and he's throwing what looks to be effortless punches that hit right around Cleverly's guard, right? So Cleverly's shooting a jab. Kovalev moves back. Then comes forward as soon as Cleverly stops throwing the jab and starts throwing hooks. They don't look like much because his balance is that good. Those are devastating punches. I'm not sure if Nathan Cleverly has ever been hit like that before in a fight. Right? These punches are much harder than, let's say, the punches of Tony Bellew. Right? They look effortless because Kovalev has such great balance, right? Kovalev can hover in the ring. He's also like characters out of horror movies. You know those horror movies where guy looks over his shoulder, can't see the zombie. Turns around, takes a step, looks back over his shoulder, 
and the zombies right here, right? That's who Kovalev is. There's going to be a moment in this fight, in my opinion, where Kovalev gets right up on Ishmael Shalab. And unlike <clears throat> what I expect from Adrian Broner against Marcus Maidan, I think Broner wins that fight. Unlike a fighter who, when pressed, can actually hide his head, can actually block shots with his forearm, and then can counter off of the hand doing the blocking. In other words, you throw something, I block it. Then I lean and I come back with the same hand. Unlike that skill set, which Broner has, here, when Kovalev gets inside, I believe Shalak's going to look as confused and get hit harder than he got hit in the Groshev fight in which he was stopped. I like Kovalev here by KO. Right? I'm not even going to hedge it. My thought process is simply that Kovalev is going to find a way sooner or later to get inside and what he's going to find is that Ishmael Shalak without his legs isn't as good defensively as he should be. In fact, it's even worse than that. What Ishmael Shalak has been taught the things that make him an elite fighter. Keeping your hands set, whatever's coming back. Right? Always being ready to throw a punch. That very thought, that very skill is going to hurt Schlock. Right? And let me just say this too. You know, I personally believe that if you're a fighter and you have fought more than a dozen fights, and you're accustomed to fighting a certain way when the bullets start flying, I believe it's almost impossible to change that in one training camp. In other words, Shalak's reflexes are such that when Kovalev starts throwing bombs, Shalak's going to try to avoid them with upper body movement and his legs. Right? I don't believe he can teach himself to literally block the shots with a forearm. Right? Think Vitaly Klitschko. Guy comes in on Klitschko, Chris Ariola, high volume guy. Guy comes in on Klitschko, you'll see Klitschko blocking shots with his forearms. Right? Klitschko's not running away, he's not using a lot of energy. He's blocking shots with the forearm, and let me just point out, the block shot then creates openings that he's able to exploit, right? I would argue that if Klitschko decided to use his legs for defense and just upper body, and Klitschko does use his upper body but combines it with block shots, if he didn't block the shots, he wouldn't be the same fighter. I think Shalak is going to be exposed defensively here. I think Kovalev is going to come in with such a volume of high power shots that Shalak is going to be absolutely stunned in the early going here. In other words, I think fighters study tapes. I don't think the tapes do Kovalev justice. There's a moment in the first round of the Cleverly fight where you see Cleverly, the champ, fighting in front of his people, actually exhale. He like goes like this, right? I believe the reason he's going like that is because even he's surprised by the punching power behind the punches, right? As they used to say in boxing, punchers are born. They're not made. Kovalev is a puncher. I'm not saying he's unbeatable. We've seen other huge punchers have problems in fights. George Foreman. Right? I'm not saying he's unbeatable. But think of how Ali beat Foreman. Had his hands up. Ropado. Right? 
how far would that rumble in the jungle have gone <clears throat> if Ali tried to beat Foreman by just leaning and moving his feet? How far would that fight have gone? What made that fight work is as Foreman comes in throwing murderous hooks. Ali's actually covered up. He's blocking the shots. By the way, that fight's not one-sided. If you actually score the fight, Ali on the ropes with his hands up, blocking shots, is winning many of those rounds. I just don't believe Ishmael Shalak at this stage of his career has those skills. I like Kovalev by knockout. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me say, too, don't leave your comments just for me. Leave your comments for the boxing community. We're talking about international fighters, right? Fighters known around the world and stuff like that. If you feel I'm shortchanging the black Russian, right? If you feel I'm shortchanging Kovalev, let us know why. Let me know your take. Let us know your take on the fight before it happens. Thanks for stopping by.